The story so far, I debunked this utterly pointless, overpriced chocolate frying pan of an invention, the portable air conditioner. After all, it had raised about $2 million all in on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or whatever. You know, and people kind of had a right to know about that. In that video, I used a couple of short clips of a guy who I'd never heard of before who gave this useless invention rave reviews. Even though in that video, he shows that this portable air conditioner is essentially useless. Now, I didn't really care whether this guy was an idiot or a shill or whatever. The bottom line is, seemed a kind of important thing to debunk to me. I was therefore stunned when Mr. Shill or Idiot actually abuses the copyright law to take down my video about this Zero Breeze portable air conditioner. Firstly, because it was clearly fair use. He was just an idiot giving it a rave review. Now, being an idiot isn't a crime. Abusing the copyright system, eh, not so much. You see, people who abuse the copyright system are the most universally hated people on YouTube. Point in question, Matt Hoss versus H3H3, a similar dealie. Matt Hoss makes cringy videos on YouTube. H3H3 comment on it saying how horrendously cringy these videos are. Hoss issues baseless copyright claims against them and H3H3 files the counter notices, at which point, Unbelievably, Mad Hoss sues and, of course, sometime later loses big. And H3H3 emerge from this as valiant heroes, while Mad Hoss is universally despised and basically never makes a video again on YouTube. Now, if you think about this, if Matt had just gone on making his cringy videos, yeah, someone didn't like him, no one would have cared. But no. He had to legally abuse the copyright system to try and take down criticism. The result is he's now remembered not so much for his cringy videos, but as the jerk who abused the copyright system then doubled down on it. The court costs were significant, you know, 100 k that sort of thing. But guess what? When it went to court, people were more than willing to donate to this sort of thing to basically pay for H3H3's legal fees in fighting the good fight. Indeed, if Hoss had any assets at this point, he would have been out of luck. In the event, it didn't really matter because by that time, eh, Hoss was working as a pizza delivery boy. The lesson is simple. Don't abuse the copyright system to take down videos you don't like. Or maybe more to the point, don't file a DMCA against someone whose only setting is fight. I'll beat you into pot. I'll take you both together. I'm coming. I mean, I've got a history of fighting these things that goes back over 10 years. This is from 2009. Whoever just filed a false DMCA claim against Thunderfoot, which took his channel down for two whole hours, by the way. I gotta tell you, I would not want to be you right now. And I've won everything I've taken on. Now, fighting these things is, of course, mostly a matter of necessity. Because if it becomes clear that you won't counter any of these things, all it takes is three bogus copyright strikes and your channel is toast. And this, this is the guy that Margie and Jay chose to file an abusive copyright takedown against. Let me get this straight. You think that your client is secretly a vigilante who spends his nights beating criminals to a pulp with his bare hands? And your plan is to blackmail this person? How's that working out for you? So, day one, I just rolled my eyes in disbelief. No one could be this stupid. That being said, if you're going to abuse the copyright system to take down a video, the first few days is the most devastating time to do it, especially if the video is picking up momentum and maybe going viral, which the Zero Breeze video was picking up momentum. So I was naturally pretty pissed when someone had manually abused the copyright law to take down my video. Suitably angry, I wrote to them saying, yeah, 
you've basically got a few hours. The time it's going to take me to make a quick response video exposing your abuse of the copyright system. That's how long you've got to get my video back up. Now, even if they had did this, which they didn't, it would have still cost me a few hours of my life and all the stress of having to do this sort of thing. But whatever, if they'd have done that, forgive and forget and move on. But no, they didn't do that. They left the claim on my channel and I had a copyright strike from this. So I put up my video and what do you know? People find folks who abuse the DMCA to be jerks. I mean, who could have seen that coming? So the next morning I check and my video is still down. So I decide, right, you want to play it that way? And I write him this email. I have now filed a DMCA counter notification. If you do not try to sue me within 14 days, I automatically win. And I have the right to sue you for damages. If you know anything about copyright law, you will know if you try to sue me, you will lose. If my video isn't back up by the end of the day, I will write to the Electronic Frontiers Foundation to see if they have any interest in taking a case to sue you for the abuse of the DMCA and damages. And then I give a nice little link to all the people who have abused the DMCA over the years. This prompted a fairly quick response from Margie and Jay, in which they stunningly claim that they are the victims here. Dear Phil, why the need for making such a negative video towards my channel or threatening messages? I hate to be the one to break this to you, but you filed legal action against me. He goes on, I am not a warlike person. I am always willing to work with you. I contacted many sources to educate myself about the copyright strike and as a content creator like yourself, I have the right to protect the channel. That's all. How is taking down my video protecting your channel? I mean, how? No need to proceed with threats and intimidation. You were the one who filed a legal action against me. If all you want is for me to remove the strike, I will. <laughs> oh, that's so generous that he's going to withdraw the abuse of the copyright law against me. Is he not merciful? But all you had to do was ask in a peaceful manner. Great spelling of peaceful, by the way. But all you had to do was ask in a peaceful manner. Yes, come and grovel to me and I might not abuse the copyright law to take down your stuff. I always try to provide the most detailed video to create confidence and credibility to my viewers, not scam them. Strange thing to say. Uh, I am a sole provider at home as a father of four and one daughter with severe autism. I am just trying to protect the channel and the small assets that we get. Like I was saying, how is filing a copyright takedown against my video protecting your channel or your assets? Once again, Phil, I am willing to settle this in a friendly manner. I'm not so sure you've acted in a friendly manner so far, but can you please remove the attacking video? But once again, my copyright claim was not to falsely accuse you or a personal attack. Yeah, oddly enough, that whole passive aggressive, why are you so acting so aggressively? All I did was file a legal action against you. Why are you so angry about this? Yeah, that's not the sort of thing that's going to rub anyone up the right way who has a brain. But even at that, he still hadn't removed his copyright complaint. So I wrote to him a, a second time saying basically, yeah, you've got another 24 hours and then I'm going to write to the Electronic Frontiers Foundation asking them if they have any interest in a slam dunk abuse of the copyright system case. Yeah, I was getting pretty touchy by this point. Dear Jason, this is not a negotiation. If you don't want to get sued, you have limited options. You're in this situation because of legal action you chose to take against me. Your interpretation of tone is not relevant here. It's very sad that you have a limited income and a family. But how does that justify you abusing the copyright law to impede my ability to earn a living on YouTube? You took legal action against me. This has consequences. I have already filed a legal response. The only question is if I continue to sue you or not. 
Yeah, I had. I'd filed the counter DMCA notice at this point. You waive the right to call yourself peaceful and not warlike when you abuse the copyright law to take down my video. You want to get back on a peaceful footing and solve this in a friendly manner. I would suggest withdrawing the false copyright claim and issuing a sincere public apology. I would suggest model on the Venom Fang X apology. I'm a reasonable guy. Act in good faith and it'll be reciprocated. File harassing legal action against me, I'll pursue you to the full extent of the law. You have until the end of the day. Best wishes, Phil. Now, as it turns out, I was actually super busy that night making one of the most sophisticated pieces of glassware that I've ever made. I'll let you know about that later. But by the time I was done finishing out that piece of glassware, it was late and I just wanted to go to bed. Now, while all this had been going on, I checked the odd time on this channel, you know, just to see what the hell was going on. And I noticed that it disabled ratings and had started deleting comments. Yeah, like that's a strategy that's going to work out for you. Now, someone sent me some screen caps over Twitter about comments my and j had supposedly made. But when I went to look for them, they weren't there. So maybe they were deleted. Uh, there was lots of that stuff going on. Uh, but I certainly saw this comment on his new video saying that he was doing this just for a hobby. Oh, really? Just a hobby? I thought this was your income for your family and your autistic daughter. Yeah, I screen capped that one. By the next morning, I got an email saying that he'd retracted the copyright claim. Oh, dear Lord. The last horse in the idiot derby finally crosses the line. So let's see what actually went on here. He took down one of my videos because this was him protecting his channel somehow, only to retract it a few days later when it became utterly clear just how the community views this sort of behavior. He also sent me this email. To my knowledge, I followed YouTube's guidelines and did not abuse the copyright law as you claim. So he still thinks he did nothing wrong. I wish to finish the dispute by retracting the claim in an attempt to end this peacefully. Unfortunately, I can't follow your request of the apology video. Keep in mind, at this point, fair use can be misinterpreted by anyone. Yeah, but it's amazing how few people will actually file a legal action based on their misinterpretation of fair use. I never use insults towards your channel or you directly. Yeah, but you did file a baseless copyright claim. I know this is not your issue or concern, but I have a daughter that needs many medical follow-ups, as I explained before, severe autism. I will retract this claim and your account will go back to normal. Oh, are you not merciful? All I ask is that you please take down that video. One more thing, I've never encountered an issue where I had to use the copyright tools from YouTube before. This is the first. Oh, poor Jay. The apology wasn't for me. It was to save you. You see, if at any of the points here, you'd have actually just made the video saying, yeah, I'm really sorry about this. I'm a bit of a noob, really messed up, didn't understand fair use, really sorry for the inconvenience. I promise I won't do it again. Really sorry. That would have been fine, right? We would all moved on with our lives, but that's not what you did. You doubled down here saying you did nothing wrong. In fact, Virtuous Jay here only backed down to protect his kids. Actually, Jay, I think the fact that you withdrew the claim after I filed the counter notice means you legally lost anyway. And in any event, you would have been responsible for the losses incurred by your takedown, no matter what. But hey, whatever. At this point, I'm like, meh, whatever. I got my video back. He doesn't want to apologize. That's fine. That's his problem. He deals with the fallout of that. You see, at the moment, I'm actually crazy busy. Busy like you wouldn't believe preparing for for two experiments, fairly complicated experiments at fairly uh, uh, high level facilities. So yeah, sure, if I'd had the time, maybe I would have squeezed the guy, but whatever. He had had ample chances to retract, but at every stage, he was given an option to take it down. He didn't, he just made my life more difficult. And for me at the moment, it just really wasn't worth the time. So yeah, I got back to preparing the experiments. Uh, 
and I was therefore a little surprised when this morning I got this. Look, I really want to end this completely. I know you're a reasonable guy because I've seen lots of your videos. I honestly wasn't attacking your channel in bad faith or knowingly made bad uh, made false accusations. My mistake was not reaching out to you to find a solution before the copyright claim. No, your mistake was filing a legal action against me. It took me nine years to build this channel and I honestly don't want to destroy it. Yeah, well, it took me over 10 years and if I didn't fight abusive copyright things like this, then my channel would have been deleted dozens of times over by now. Whoever just filed a false DMCA claim against Thunderfoot, which took his channel down for two whole hours, by the way. I made a video last night stating that I removed the copyright claim against your channel. Uh, yeah, which you then deleted. Now, thankfully, Dave from EEV Blogs, who does some wonderful takedowns of scammy Kickstarter type stuff, highly recommended, links below, snagged a copy of that video before he took it down. But it was basically the guy reading his email and saying how he did nothing wrong. All the time while pointing a camera at the screen, which had both his and my email displayed on the screen. Uh, yeah, not so bright, but whatever. It was a very non-pology, but we'll come back to that in a sec. But I have not used anything against you, uh, other, than the, <laughs> other than filing legal action against me. I apologize if I caused a uh, major inconvenience. Don't care at this point, it's done. But can we come to a solution? Well, you've got nothing left. What is there that you want from me? I mean, you made my life difficult for a few days. You you didn't just retract the claim when you had the chance. Uh, what, what, what do you want? Please don't request an apology video. <laughs> because once again, right or wrong, I took it off voluntarily and never knowingly did anything that I knew was wrong. Uh, yeah, um, you accidentally filed a legal action against me. I would never do this in a bogus manner. My channel is about electronics, drama free, that don't have a middleman. That's it. Can we come to a peaceful solution and possibly make a live video to chat and meet? I'm really asking this in an attempt to bring peace. Uh, what? What, 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 what do you want here? That you file a legal action against me, I have to fight it, and now you want me to spend more time to kiss and make up afterwards? Dude, I, I, I don't care. Uh, can we come to a peaceful, <laughs> peaceful solution? Um, possibly uh, make a live video to chat and meet. What? Why would anyone care? I'm really asking this in an attempt to bring peace. Uh, huh. Well, it's <laughs> certainly sounding kind of desperate. But like I was saying, the apology should have been something you should have proactively done as soon as possible. You know, along with just retracting the claim, or even better, just not filing it in the first place. Instead, you went for the non-apology, which kind of undermines any subsequent apology. You know, Marty and Jay, the guy who always does the right thing after all other possible alternatives have been exhausted. Look, I've got stuff to do. The only advice I can give is don't act like a jerk in future. I mean, sure, if you'd have made the sincere apology and retracted the DMCA, in a timely manner, I would have taken down my video calling it out because that's what reciprocation is. If you'd have showed genuine contrition that you'd actually screwed me over here, yeah, sure, I would have reciprocated, but that's not what you did. You only did the right thing when there were no other options left on the table. And I'm sorry, at that point, you don't get sympathy. You don't get to hug and kiss and make up. You get to be an example. Now, stuff like this happens on a semi-regular basis. Even if few are as, uh, uh, as willing to commit as Jay here. And for reasons like this, I have to say again how grateful I am to all those who support this channel on Patreon. Because this really does give me a fantastic buffer against this sort of thing. 
That being said, I'm not putting any of this DMCA drama into the Patreon supported feed because people support this channel for the interesting sciencey stuff. The, the drama in this case comes for free. Although I am reluctant to call it drama because this sort of zealous copyright behavior is toxic to every YouTube creator out there. And I genuinely fear for what Article 13 of the European Union might bring. In more or less the same way that I feared what the DMCA might bring when it was introduced in the US. Because when it was first introduced, the DMCA had YouTube killer written all over it. Yeah, this is what you get when you have the sort of people in charge of legislation on the internet who think the internet is like a series of tubes and Article 13 is no better. But currently, Article 13 just looks like the European version of the DMCA for slow learners. So yeah, fights like this are necessary, and it's only right that they should be done in public. Right, so to anyone who's interested in what I've actually been doing for work for the past couple of weeks or so, the next six minutes is for you. So uh, this is one of my problems. This is nitrogen 15 guanodinium. There's about one gram in there, and it's worth about $4,000, give or take. And the experiment that I'm about to do, I've got to be able to dissolve it and dry it out without losing a single milligram. Right? So it's actually quite challenging to not lose anything at all while doing this sort of thing oh and it's also got to not be exposed to the atmosphere whilst this is all happening um because it's going to be hydrogen deuterium substituted so uh yeah i can't have it exposed to the water in the air because that's all light water now if you want to dry stuff out the usual way that you might do it yeah, you, know, you can't do it on a bench, but if you want to do it in an enclosed system, you just put your solution in there, you stick it in the vacuum, and the water evaporates off. But the problem is, as you get down to the last little bits, it tends to bump. And when it does so, it sprays all over the place, which is exceptionally bad if you want to not lose any of it. You know, because losing any of it means I can... Um, oh, it's, it's an absolute disaster. So that's basically what this kit is all four now you might recall from my life in the ball pit video that the vapor pressure of water uh, you know it, it doesn't matter what the atmosphere is uh the vapor pressure of water is the same whether it's a vacuum or atmosphere one atmosphere of air or one atmosphere of argon the vapor pressure of water is always the same so in principle water will evaporate just as quickly in a stream of argon as it will um, in a vacuum. Uh, but that means that you don't get the boiling. You only get the boiling um, under, under vacuum. Right? Because when you get a little bubble of water vapor in here, uh, if the vapor pressure in there is larger than the vapor pressure above, the bubbles expand and it throws the stuff everywhere. So that's a complete disaster. So... Uh, what this does is, seeing as it's such an expensive sample, here I have a $10 circulating pump from uh, China. And that will go on there, like that. Uh, my sample goes in there. And what you do is you pump your air down this tube here. Uh, it's going to be dry argon coming in here. Uh, in this closed system and then that's going to pick up water so it's now going to be one um, vapor pressure of water gas is then going to blow out the top here through the condenser which will be filled with sort of ice water but that only gets you down to freezing temperature that's not so good i want to get this down to basically zero vapor pressure of water at freezing temperature is still about four millibar Whereas at room temperature is about 20 millibars. So there's still quite a lot of water in the in the vat in the vapor phase coming into here. Uh, so obviously the liquid water is just going to condense and drip down, but you've still got vapor pressure up at room temperature. So this is then going to be stuck in liquid nitrogen. So the water that drips down here freezes, that's great. And when if there's any 
water vapor in here it'll condense on the side um, and then the gas just returns back up here where it circulates through the pump and goes around again <laughs> so all of that is just to dry out about one gram of sample Nick, I think that's an awesome piece of glass where you ain't seen nothing yet you should see this thing which is another one of the things that I've made recently and it all basically goes down to what's in there so that is a microjet or that's the where the microjet comes out of and what's going to be in there is sodium potassium alloy uh, so sodium potassium alloy actually goes in the top there and you put it under pressure and it comes out as a jet about the size of a human hair 100 microns but of course you do that in air and it'll just catch fire you don't want it to catch fire so it's got to be under vacuum at the bottom so that's what all this stuff basically does you've got vacuum coming in from the bottom so you can evacuate all of this and you can evacuate all of this which you need to because if you put your sodium potassium alloy straight into there there's air in there it'll react with it so you put it all under vacuum first then you close this tap so the bottom's under vacuum and then you can fill it up with argon to here you fill this up with sodium potassium alloy it's only a test rig at the moment then you can uh, close this guy and you're going to apply pressure, driver pressure which gets you the, the microjet of sodium potassium alloy which you can then film with a suitable camera and the high speed camera on this as well and then lastly you need some absolutely perfect control of water vapor going in here yeah so it's all sort of related to uh, sodium exploding in water but this is quite a fiddly little rig so after you've got your microjet coming out of there this is a, so that bit there is then going to be transferred into a, a synchrotron x-ray source where it's going to be hit by an x-ray beam of also about the size of a human hair and then you're going to measure the energy of the electrons that come off that this is pretty fiddly stuff to do